All right, guys, the review on the Moondrop and Critical Collab Dusk. I've had this for over a week now, and I have used it every single day since I've gotten it and done plenty of listening. I haven't listened to the most extensive list of IEMs, and most have generally been on the cheaper side. I'll put a list on the screen of what I have listened to or what I can remember. Um, my last primary pair of IMs I have pretty much used for the past four years or so were the FIO FA9. So that's primarily what I'm going to be making comparisons to. Here are the IMs in that Moondrop case. Um, I also want to preface this video by saying that this review and my experience is mostly coming from my time using these with the DSP cable at the default setting. I haven't downloaded the Moondrop app and I don't plan to, so I haven't tried any of the other EQs. I have also very, very briefly tried these with the analog cable and they are similar in sound, but I find the analog is just slightly more thin and lean compared to this with the DSP cable, which makes it fuller warmer and just a more engaging sound so that's why i just permanently use the dsp cable and it's also more convenient for me because like my laptop over there and my phone over here they all use usb-c cables so i just plug this directly in and that's pretty much it it works i don't need a separate amp or dac so uh yeah first of all i'll just start with like the physical aspect of these IMs, they are pretty large. These are the largest IMs I have tried to date. I still have the um, stock moon drop. I think they're called spring tips on here. I did try some other uh, ear tips from my FIO FA9 and they did fit on here. The nozzle is kind of like, you know, your average size. It does fit with other IM ear tips. But I found these um, spring tips work the best because they are very open. I like this kind of warmer, full-bodied sound that these ear tips give, and it works really well on these IMs. If you have smaller ears, you might have um, comfort issues with these. Luckily, my ears and my ear canals are both on the larger side, so these fit me, and I don't have any issues. At work, I've been wearing these for like four to five hours straight, and I don't have any kind of comfort issues whatsoever. So comfort is fine for me. Next, I wanna talk about the noise isolation. And I found that it isn't the greatest, but it's still okay. And that's because I mainly think it has vents on here, you know, for the dynamic drivers. So noise isolation isn't the best on here. Um, at my work office, there is a pretty loud and annoying HVAC vent pretty much blowing all the time in the background. And these don't isolate from that as much as I would like. For comparison, my previous FA9, those were all balanced armatures and they had no venting. So those were really good at noise isolation. These, not so much, but they still are pretty good. And if you have music playing, you pretty much block out most things in the background anyway. I would say if you really want to get the most out of your uh, experience, you definitely want to use these in a quiet environment. This cable, I'm not really a fan of this design right here, specifically um, this part. To reduce the cable noise and tug on my FIO FA9, I used to be able to slide like this ring all the way up here. So this would be stuck together like that. And this thing would be snug against my chin. So there wouldn't be any kind of cable movement and that greatly prevents noise when walking around. But um, this only goes up to the base of the control buttons, which is not that far up. And also this thing is kind of useless because it's too big, so it just slides down all the time. So even when I bring this up, eventually by itself, it just falls back down. 
because it's too big and open. It needs to be made out of rubber or something or be a little bit smaller so it's more constrictive. So what I did was I just took that Velcro cable tie strap and tied it at the bottom of this just to prevent it from going down. So then it won't keep sliding back down here all the time. So, so far this has been working really great for me actually. Uh, looks kind of weird and it's a little bulky, but I mean, that's, that's what I'm using right now and it's working, so. Also, the controls on the DSP, uh, like these media controls, they work fine. You know, you can easily click the buttons, but hitting the play and pause is a little bit more difficult. Um, just, you know, some something slight to mention if you guys care about using the media controls. I use it sometimes, not all the time, so. Yeah, just something that I've experienced. Now, let's talk about the sound. If you guys have seen my unboxing video, you know that I think that these sound incredible and these are the best IEMs I have heard to date. I think everything sounds perfectly tuned and balanced. The music sounds clean and detailed, yet still very rich and engaging at the same time. For my personal tastes in IEMs and other earphones, I generally have a preference for like a warmer, engaging kind of sound tuning. Um, I'm not really a fan of like a, those thin slash cold or harsh sounding IEMs that focus too much on the treble. Obviously, harsh or thin sounding IEMs would be different for pretty much everyone because we all hear it differently. Um, but I know that I personally have very sensitive ears and I am particularly sensitive to higher frequencies. Maybe more than your average person. Just for example, if you have tried the TIN T2s, I would consider those way too sibilant for my ears and the highs were just piercing. Um, this is probably why I've used the FIO FA7 and FA9 for such a long time because those were tuned to be more on the warmer side. However, being that those earphones were all balanced armature setups. I'm not gonna lie, I did kind of miss the impact and the thump that you get with a dynamic driver. And that is primarily the reason why I wanted to switch to something different, like the Dusk. The bass sounds incredible on here, and it just sounds very lively and engaging. I'm hearing so much more low-end extension on these than I did with my FA9 and the Dynamic drivers really make the bass much more impactful. Like you can feel the power of the bass on these. Yet it's also still very tight and controlled. When listening to certain genres like jazz, for example, I can feel like the impacts of the drums and also feel the vibrations of like the strings from the bass and cellos. It's just very, very well done. And something that was missing from my FA9, which I felt were more analytical and lean. The mids and treble are also perfectly tuned, in my opinion. All vocals, male or female, they sound very natural and right where they should be. Uh, female vocals particularly don't get too loud or harsh. And everything sounds like it's there and audible without being overbearing. I would definitely say these are very detailed and resolving as I'm able to pick out a lot of things that I never heard before in other pairs of earphones or headphones. I'm telling you guys, I'm even picking out new things that I've never heard before in songs that I've listened to hundreds of times. So I'm very familiar with those tracks, yet I'm still picking out new things. After hearing those new details on here, if I try to listen to my other headphones or earphones and try to see if I can pick those same details out. I can, but they're not as pronounced as they are when using these Moondrop Dusks. The Dusk is just incredibly detailed and on certain tracks that are like recorded or mastered a certain way, it sounds like you are there because the depth perception is also pretty well done in my opinion. For example, at work, I was listening to the new Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the album, you know, when they released the whole uh, game soundtrack, and specifically with the Queen's Blood, like the side game, the card game soundtrack, 
It's like a very jazzy kind of music. And when I was listening to it, it sounded like there was a band playing inside my head. Almost like I was with them at a live concert. So it, the feeling was pretty amazing that I was getting with these that I wasn't getting with other pairs of audio equipment. Imaging is also very well done. I can easily pick out, you know, what direction things are coming from. If you want to use these for gaming as well, you know, you can definitely do that. But I would say, even though the imaging is pretty good, the soundstage isn't particularly wide. I've definitely used some other wireless earbuds even, and especially headphones that have a much wider soundstage than these, but it's still okay, I would say. I'll just say that these are the best sounding pair of audio playing equipment that I have stuck in my ears. Yeah, they just sound pretty damn phenomenal. The last thing I want to mention is any noise or artifacts coming from the DSP cable. Since I did read in some reviews that, you know, people were hearing those artifacts and also even being able to measure those on some kind of chart. I will say yes, I do sometimes hear audible noises or hisses coming from certain tracks and I found it's only audible during certain pauses. Now it's very rare though, and kind of random since it only does it on certain track pauses. Some tracks, there are quiet pauses, but no noise. And on some, there are. I would say like 95% of the time, I don't hear any noise, or I just forget that it's even there if there are any, because I'm enjoying the music. The DSP noise is actually easier to pick out when I'm doing things like video editing though. Um, not listening to music. So when I'm editing videos and stuff, or even watching a YouTube video and people are talking, it's actually a lot easier to pick out the background hiss and the noises from the DSP cable in pauses like that, where someone is talking in a YouTube video. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's just something that I noticed. But then again, if you just completely want to cut out any of the DSP noise, Without a doubt, you could always just use the analog cable. You don't have to use the DSP cable. So so I think that pretty much wraps it up for this review. As you can tell, I love this IEM. And for mobile users like me who mostly just listen to music on their phone and laptops, I would say this DSP cable is actually pretty damn convenient. From my perspective as someone who only has a phone, and I don't have any of the high-end amps or a separate DAP. The DSP actually saves me quite a bit of money since I don't have to go and buy another amp or audio player. So I think this is a win in my personal opinion. Though if you guys already have all that you know, expensive gear and stuff, I understand why you would want this DSP tuning built in with the uh, analog stuff. Thanks for watching my review on the Moondrop Dusk. I will use these to edit this video and also continue to use these every day for my music listening because they just sound really, really good. That's it guys. Thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next video.